What's going on everyone? Steven here. In this video I'm going to show you how to do some hacking with DN Spy. I've done a video or two with DN Spy in the past. It's been quite a while. Um, and yeah, so this game Tunic, something I've been looking forward to for a long time. Um, there was like a demo weekend recently on Steam, so I picked it up, uh, downloaded the demo, and since it's Unity based, I can use DN Spy uh, to do some fun little hacks. And you can quickly do some things that, you know, using Cheat Engine would take you significantly longer to achieve. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you some stuff here. I figured it would be fun while I'm focused on it, you know. So, anyway, uh, the link I have up over here is the GitHub repository for DN Spy. So what you would do is go here and then you scroll down a little bit and you see this releases here under binaries. If you were to go there, all right, then you would choose which one of these you want. So based on if your game is 32 or 64 bit, you would choose the respective one of these. So uh, this game is 64 bit, so I've chosen this one. So you would just download this, um, extract its contents somewhere, and then run that. So uh, let me bring up DN Spy here. So once you extracted it, it would basically look like this and double click to run DN Spy. And it might take a second to start up. But while it's doing that, um, I'm going to go in the game here and just show you some very quick things. You know, so like, what do you want to hack, basically? So in this, I'm going to hack health, stamina. So if you look and see in the uh, player stats there, that's the health on the left, stamina on the right. Um, and then I want to do one-hit kills of enemies. So, you know, if I hit an enemy, all right, a couple of hits there. Um, and then, let's see... All right, so presumably you need a key or something to open this door, right? So I'm doing this to show you like what's going on here whenever you try to open a door because that's going to kind of help us a little bit whenever we create a hack that lets us just open any door, all right? Um, so I think that's it. <clears throat> so basically what you want to do is um, go to... Let me get the directory up here. All right, so wherever your game is, you want to go into the managed directory. And most of what you want to attack or hack or whatever is in assembly-c-sharp. Now, if you just downloaded the inspire and you started up, you would have a bunch of stuff already here in the assembly explorer. I'm gonna click and drag this over into here, which is what you would do, or you could file open. Uh, but if you want to clear out all the other stuff that's there, it's not particularly necessary, the default stuff. You could go File, uh, Close All, and that would close everything in here. All right, so once you have the Assembly C Sharp over here in the Assembly Explorer, all right, you'll just drill down to here, all right, and... You know, maybe you want to dig around in some of this stuff, but pretty much everything resides in this here. All right. So uh, drilling down into here, there's like all these classes and, you know, there's methods and properties and all kinds of stuff in these classes. And there's a couple of things that you can do to look for stuff that you're interested in. One of them is just to look at the names of all these and look for stuff that seems interesting to you. Uh, drill down into it, like here's one, cheats. All right, maybe you want to dig around in this and try to figure out how to enable the cheats if you can, right? Um, or, you know, short of that, I'm first interested in HP. All right, or hit points or health or something like that. So what you can do is over here, like I will actually click here, okay? Um, and then 
let's say uh, HP and in the search for all right you can either do selected files we're in this particular assembly C sharp so you know if you have a ton of files in there you could search through all files that you have over here in the assembly Explorer or the selected files files in the same folder blah 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 so that's what those options are there this allows you to select what type of thing you want to have the text you're searching for right um, so you can actually search all of the above or you can look for like a number slash string so I'm interested in a method or like a function so the function that does something related to HP or health or whatever right so if you're uncertain of what any of this stuff is and you just want to dig around everything that says whatever you're interested in you can just say all of the above or try the number string short of that right but since I know I'm looking for a method I'm gonna click that and then we've got HP here so um, now over here we've got our class names and then over here we have uh, like the names of the methods so you can kind of look at these names look at the class name and you can kind of correlate what's what okay so typically with programming you've got getters and setters so getting is like you know getting a value reading a value setting a value is like writing the value right you're setting a new value so you can kind of think of this as like read and write <laughs> you know there's more to it than that but that's a good sort of like core view of it okay so as we're looking through this we're seeing set HP okay we've got a couple of set HP's here for the player character then we have a set HP for creature so this might be a good way for us to differentiate between the player and a creature you know whereas otherwise maybe these things have a shared instruction you know if you're like hacking from cheat engine but here we're in the source man you know so we just get to do what we want right here <laughs> um, so now what you can do is just double click on whatever right and you can start reading through whatever that particular thing does okay so this is where you, you might need to read through and figure out what's what you know it can take a little bit you can definitely learn some stuff along the way this looks all complex but just think of it from like a 10,000 foot view you know so don't necessarily worry about your getter just worry about your setter um, you know just think about this as being the thing that writes if something happens you don't need to necessarily worry about reading the condition you can just look at a result of the condition we see base start coroutine this dot die I mean that kind of seems obvious right we're in the player character class with set HP we've got die in here that probably means if your health is whatever then die right otherwise this dot damage right presumably you're taking damage equals whatever your max HP is minus the result of this okay so you don't even need to worry about what does clamp do I mean if you want you can hover over and see kind of read what this does and try to like figure it out and you know like I was saying you can learn a lot by just reading through this stuff and actually figuring out what's going on and blah 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 but anyway so here with the player if we're not dying then we're setting damage to be the result of this so let's go in the game here let's take some damage all right we see health decrease there and it's just gonna stay there right so I'm gonna get away from that homie over there all right well if this is actually the thing that sets our HP then this is presumably you know the condition that our HP is being written right so whenever we attack an enemy which I did earlier 
right? Let's look at this creature set HP. Let's double click that. Okay. So once again here, there's a lot of stuff here, but you can kind of just look at it from a, again, a 10,000 foot view, right? Get, you don't necessarily have to worry about that. This dot max HP minus this dot damage, which makes sense, right? Your maximum HP minus your damage. Um, well, it's kind of interesting because it's always looking at max HP, which is probably why you're seeing this result here. So instead of having like a current health, right, this is kind of always factoring a current health and subtracting it from the max HP. So, you know, where normally you would have a, a current health that you're looking at and you're kind of looking for instructions related to that, this is kind of always comparing to max HP, right? So here we have, we see start code routine die. This is dead true, all right? So in this one, we do want to look at the condition. We know we want the enemy to die, and this is presumably what we need to get into, right? This if statement here. If this dot damage equals this dot max HP, right? So if the damage is equal to max HP, then that means, you know, that's it. Okay, like enemy dead, pretty much. And, okay, that exclamation mark means not or the opposite of. So is dead, you know, is this thing dead, right? This basically says if it's not dead, right? Oops, go back. Okay, so if damage is equal to max HP and it's not dead, then is dead is true. And then you have all this other stuff and sounds play, it looks like, right? And then it starts this death thing. So what if, you know, like how might we want to change this? Now, sometimes like setters can be shared. Um with uh, whenever something is initialized. So when enemies are loading up in the game, you know, you might want to provision for scenarios like that. Otherwise, you might see enemies spawn in with zero health. And like in the case of this game, if they do that, you can't attack them or anything. They, they won't attack either. They end up in this like weird death state where they spawn in, but then they don't do anything. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that could technically be a cheat in and of itself, but otherwise what you could do is um, just try to provision for behavior like that. So let's go ahead and create, um, well, before we do that, let's, let's look at stamina, okay? Um, and let's again look for setters. We have a set max stamina for creature. We have a set stamina for player character, set stamina for creature. So we know we want to set stamina for us, okay? And if we look through here, we see if player character instanced. So basically, I guess if the player character exists, then their stamina equals whatever the result of this is, okay? And so that looks like what we would want to attack for stamina, right? And finally, with the key and the door, you could search for key, you could search for door. And if you did that, uh, or if you look through here, right? Look at this, door. We have this class of door. And now we can look through like the methods related to door. Now, when I tried to open the door, right it didn't open it made a sound it rattled well here's this method rattle look at this jiggle okay well this is the actual method of rattling itself this is a method of opening the door right so if we look up at these other um methods here here we have this checking for a key item we see this dot open this is like a reference to the class so it knows that in this class 
it has a method called open, which is here, right? So when it says this, it's understanding that inside it's the context of door, right? Um, so, you know, you can look around in here and what do we see here? We see this dot open, which looks pretty good, return true. But then we see this, try to open door that was already open. So even though this condition kind of looks like something we might be interested in, we haven't opened a door yet, so maybe this thing isn't going to be what we're interested in. Okay, so let's look at this else if. We see this generic show prompt. We see this use key prompt language line. No idea what that is. New action this dot open. New action this dot rattle. Uh, I have no idea what that does, right? Else this dot rattle. Okay, so maybe we do need to do something with this. Maybe we need to do something with this. But before we do any of that, what if we just try the one thing that rattles? Okay, <laughs> let's attack this first, since that would presumably be super easy to do, right? Um, uh, let's see, someone is knocking on my door. I think that's a package, so I will be right back and we'll pick up here. All right, I'm back. That was a thing. <laughs> anyway, okay. So uh, now we have the kind of rough idea of the cheats we want to create and the functionality we want to modify to make those cheats happen. So since we're here in this door class in a spot that we think will work here, um, let's go ahead and do this cheat first. Before we do that though, let me just say real quick, there is a lot of, um, you know, trial and error in this stuff. Sometimes it's really straightforward. It seems like it's straightforward in this video because I've already done this, you know, you know, tr truth is I may have spent a lot more time digging for stuff or trying the wrong things, but, you know, so don't feel like if you don't get it quite as fast or some of these things you can't make the same inferences because you know maybe you're not a programmer and you don't know what classes are and context uh, blah 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 <laughs> right so um you know the great thing about the inspy typically is that you know unless these names are obfuscated it's at least you've got some kind of plain english stuff going on which tends to make it a lot easier to find what to futz around with, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the cheats. Uh, so now what you can do is to actually modify something, all right? You can right-click and say Edit Method, okay? You can also Edit Class, which will bring up, like, this whole thing. So basically, everything that's in here individually it's all in here. So if you go scrolling through here, you'll see everything that's down here, just everything in one place. So this is the entire class. If you modify the class, it will bring up all of this stuff that you can modify. But if you do individual things like modify or edit this method, right, we'll just be taken in this method to modify. So I'm going to say edit method. All right, it's going to decompile that. So what I want to try to do here is change this dot rattle to this dot open. So instead of rattle, let's see what happens there. Okay, and I'm going to go compile. But I'm going to do one more thing as well. Okay, I noticed that here in the open method, there's this item equals this dot key item, and then it gets the quantity, and then it tries to do some math with the quantity. Well, we're trying to open something without actually having a key. So maybe keeping this in here is fine. Or maybe this causes the game to crash because it's going to subtract 1 from 0, which puts that quantity at a negative 1. Maybe that's going to screw stuff up, a value below 0. Maybe that's just going to wreck stuff, right? And that's easy enough to test. You could compile this, save the module, and see what happens. Or, <clears throat> you know, I'm really just saying this so that if you were to have that happen and you're like, why is the game crashing whenever I made this change, 
I just wanted it to open. Maybe it's because there's something going on in that method or whatever that you might need to provision for, right? So let's go ahead and edit this method and let's get rid of these three lines here. Let's just delete them, right? We're not going to worry about a, a quantity, an item, or any of that crap. Let's compile that. Okay, so now we should have our door hack. Okay, let's go to the player character set stamina. And in the setter here, player character instance.stamina equals, all right, max. It's going to choose the largest of two or more values. So whatever value comes through here or zero, whichever one of these is larger, it's going to set it at that. Okay. And this is where you could play with a value. Instead of doing this, right, we're going to go in here, edit method. Okay. What if we just change this to, you know, this is where you can make a change. You go in the game, you see what happens. Because I've already done that, I first tried 1F. And what happens is I do get infinite stamina because it's just always set to that. But the bar in the game, the green bar, drops down to what looks like nothing. So this is presumably too low of a value for what gets represented over there in the GUI with the actual stamina bar. And then I found that I just needed to have 100 as a float and the bar stays filled up. Right. So let's compile that. Okay. So literally we're just setting stamina to an exact value that we want it to be and that's it. Period. Right. So that F means float, but you can also um, determine uh, a type. You can hover over like stamina here. You see how it says float. We can also look at the getter and see a float. We can see float here. So the type, whether it's an integer, a float, a string, you can gather that information from a few different ways. So we're gonna compile that. Okay, and finally, let's do HP and set HP for the player character. All right, so we're looking at this. We see the getter, we see the setter, which is death, else this dot damage is max HP minus this. What if we edit this method and we just say this dot damage is zero. All right? So no damage. So presumably none of this should happen because the first time we get damaged, it should come into this else condition because unless we get hit initially by something that takes away our full max HP or whatever which would kill us otherwise set this damage to zero okay so another thing that you could do is modify a value up here before the if to try to provision for this not happening there but we're just gonna make the change here and see what happens compile all right um, and sometimes you might write conditions, you make changes, and then you'll see what gets compiled here is something totally different from what you wrote. And that can be because of view options. Uh, let's see, compiler, optimize code, right? If you toggle optimize code, then you can expect to see changes happen, right? Uh, otherwise, you should basically see whatever you wrote. Okay. Um, okay, so finally, let's go to creature here. I'm going to double click that. And now, uh, let's see. So we've got the getter, the setter, this dot damage equals max HP minus whatever. Okay. So, Initially, oops, let me right click and say edit method. When I first did this, th the iteration of the cheat I tried to write didn't work because it did what I was explaining earlier, where it spawned the character or the creatures with like zero health and they just kind of sit there and you can't 
like damage them or attack them or anything. So what I ended up coming up with is if this dot damage is not equal to zero. So if this dot damage is basically above zero so that we know that some kind of damage has occurred. If we know, so basically if we know we've attacked a creature, then we will set this dot damage equal to this dot max HP, right? So now we set damage equal to the creature's max HP. And then if this dot damage is equal to this dot max HP, which we're setting that condition here above, and it's not dead, then it should kill it. So this essentially provisions for however this setter is used when the creature is spawned in, it spawns in without having any damage. So instead of this kind of happening and it acting wonky when it spawns, it seems to account for that. So let's compile that. And, you know, you might be compiling individual things at a time. You know, I'm doing all this at once for the sake of the video, but normally you're going to be file, save module. You're going to be doing that a lot. Okay. So before you save your module and start doing all that stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and click save module and say, okay. But usually before you do that, um, right click on the original DLL, uh, create a copy of it, right? And then I append dot original to that. So I keep an original copy always of that DLL or anyone that you want to modify. Keep an original copy of it, you know, and just don't touch it. And then if you need to go back to it, you can. So now that we've modified this, I'm going to need to restart the game so that it will load that new assembly. So I'm going to quit the title, quit out. Okay, now we are going to start that again. Okay, tunic. All right, uh, OBS wasn't picking up the window again so I just needed to fix that real quick but I'm back we're in the game we've launched it we have our uh, new assembly that we've written so let's check our cheats out see what happens so what about infinite stamina that looks good we're jumping around and the stamina is staying uh, at full at max okay so we also try to give ourselves infinite health let's check that out I'm going to have to go uh, pick up this stick here first so that I can damage enemies. Alright, let's get this. Okay, tab, assign it to a key, tab again. Alright. So first, let's take some damage and see what happens. Alright, looking good. We're not taking any damage. All right, let's smack this guy, and he's toast. All right, let's try a more powerful enemy, a much more powerful enemy here. Uh, these dudes normally take quite a number of hits. Um, so whenever you're using the stick, especially instead of the sword, these guys right here, all right, these guys too, one shot, everything is one hit. So our one hit kill condition appears to be working. All right, this is a door that normally you can't go in. So let's see what happens when we hit space bar. Boom, animation runs, we can go in the door. We're good to go. Let's go try that other door that we did originally and see what happens back over here run down these steps and here's this door let's see what happens there we go all right so we've got our infinite health we've got our one hit kills and we've got our door 
uh, we don't need the key to open a door. So I don't know if you can actually go into here with the demo. <laughs> you can get to uh, this place we're going to now. You can get to here by going through like a, a cave or like a little dungeon. Uh, but otherwise, I think that little section we were just in. I don't know if you can go there. But anyway, okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, very, very simple, relatively speaking, right? Like if we wanted to do that key thing, we might have needed to wait until we got a key so that we could modify memory, right? Um, or scan memory for changed values. Uh, we might have used um, Ultimap to try to find the a function related to opening the door like <laughs> this just makes things so much easier so all right hope you enjoyed it uh, give me a thumbs up if you did don't forget to subscribe and i will just see you guys in the next video all right take care